Hello friends, this is Jeannie from Metal Dollhouse Rescue and here I am in my doll room. I've had another busy week so I've not had a chance to be in here very much. As you might recall, I have moved the Wolverine house that I've been working on off of my work table and I have another house here that I'm going to start working on today. The steps will be somewhat similar to what I did before but um, it's going to be with a completely different house. So let me show you what house this is. This is the Tin Soldier House, and look, I've got a grandma in there. She's keeping an eye on the renovations. She's just a little bit nervous, so she's going to keep an eye on us. Um, let's just take a quick look at this house. You can see some rust back in the kitchen, and you can see some here on the front, a little bit on that floor, and a little bit here on the front of uh, the Tin Soldier bedroom. Now, the reason this is called the Tin Soldier is because this was a new bedroom decor when it first came out and obviously it's the Tin Soldier. Some of the other designs you'll see in the bedrooms is um, some of the Marks houses have the nursery over here and they have either an ABC pattern on the floor or they have a Disney pattern on the floor. Um, and I can't remember, I think those are the two options that you see, but that's the um, house that's got, it usually has a patio and a laundry over, room over here, and this one does not have that. This house first came out, was first in the Sears catalog in 1952, and sometimes you'll find it with over on this end, sometimes it will have the rumpus room or like a recreation room. I'll have a breezeway and a recreation room. This house does not have that. But let's do a little assessment as we go around this house and then I'm gonna tell you where I got this house. This side looks good, no fading, no marks. I don't see much for scratches or anything. This side looks good. Oh, guess what? I had some more of those flowers and I put them on there because I love them so much and I probably will put them back. But for now, let's take them off and you'll see there's just a plain window box. You might recall that I put a little magnet on the back of these under that paper so I could put those on there and take them off and rearrange them and do something else if I want. Um, and the reason I put that paper on there is I found out if I just glued the magnets on there and then put them on the house, mm -hmm. those magnets were strong enough that it would actually pull them off of my paper. And I'd end up with just my paper here and magnets left on the house. So that's why I put that paper on there to keep from those magnets coming off. So you can see I've got some of my pretty flowers down here. They're going to come off for now because we're going to wash this house. This house has got very little fading, maybe a little bit of yellowing to the white. Uh, the roof's in pretty good shape. A lot of the tabs are out. There's a little scratch here. I'm going to take this flower off. Grandma won't be happy when she sees I took her flowers off. Very little fading, very little scratching. On this side, um, for some reason, this is a little rough here, so I'm going to repair that. I want to make sure that no one, no grandchildren or anybody ever gets poked on that. That that metal is just uh, roughed up a little bit where that tab's supposed to be. And look, I've got more flowers on there. Let's take those off. Otherwise, this is in good shape. It's got some marker over here that's going to need to come off. So the first thing I want to do is clean this dollhouse. There's the roof. It's a little bent. I'll have to straighten that out. I'll show you how to do that again. The chimney is gone. However, I do have that chimney. The reason it's gone is I took it off so that I could make a copy of it for anybody that needs a copy. So I do have the Tin Soldier chimney available for you if you need it. I think I have not posted it yet as a PDF, but you can contact me. I can print it for you, and I will also get that posted for you. So we've got some work to do, to some rust removal. We'll do a little sanding on this back here. I'm going to get a light turned on so you can see that better, but you can get an idea that you can see right now. It's got some rust back here, and these other rust spots will get fixed up too. So let us start with cleaning this house. I want to tell you where I got this house. Um, as I'm going to, I'm going to uh, get my cleaning supplies going here. Just one minute. I've got my cleaning supplies out here. I've got a paper towel. Mm -hmm. I've got a whole roll of those if I need more. I like to use rubbing alcohol as my primary cleaner on houses unless they're really, really dirty, dirty. Um, I like to use rubbing alcohol because if the moisture gets back inside the metal cracks and crevices, um, it would evaporate quickly and not cause rust. 
The other thing I'm going to use, if it's a little bit dirtier, is this Spray 9 Cleaner. I also like to use Awesome Cleaner from the Dollar Tree, but today I'm going to use this Spray 9. My husband has recommended that to me. Um, he uses it in cars, and he bought me this bottle, so we're going to use it today. The other thing I have, and I, I'm going to remember to use, I forgot to put it on my Wolverine, but I got some of this Armor All Interior detailer wipes and I think that might even give a little shine to the interior so I'm going to try that on this house it'll be the first time I've actually tried this product all right let me tell you I'm going to start working on I'm going to start cleaning this a little bit I'm going to talk a little bit while I do it about um about where I got this house and how long I've had it okay I've got my light on now so you can see that rust back in the corner a little better you can see it's not very good looking back there but it doesn't seem to be much on the wall so that's very nice and a little bit here at the front and up here and back here. And there's grandma keeping an eye on us. Now, I have had this house quite a long time. Uh, I have my childhood dollhouse that is one of the, um, I think it's the Marks Colonial. And one of these days I'll get that out and show it to you. It's in pretty good condition considering I've had it since I was a little girl. It's got, I think, very little rust. Anyway, we'll look at it some other day. This one I've also had quite a while. I had found this at a dollhouse quite a long time ago. I would say probably 15 years ago. And even back then, I kind of, before I was seriously collecting dollhouses, I used to seriously collect dolls. And I think you know that because I'm in my doll room and it's filled with dolls. So I think you probably are aware of that. This house, however, I got it at a garage sale quite a long time ago. I did not pay very much for it. It did not have any furniture with it. It should have scale 124, the half inch scale. And um, it's it has never had its own furniture. Um, other than I had bought some at uh, like uh, KB Toys. And it, it's like pink and purple plastic. And that is what has resided in this house for a number of years. It's pink and purple plastic furniture it was the right scale and it worked just fine but we'll see I might do something different down the road we're just gonna get the this house is not real dirty inside the roof has got quite a little bit of rust or dust on it it has sat in my doll room it's been played with by my grandkids off and on and um, so it's been enjoyed but it's been treated pretty well I'm sure it was dented when I got it at my garage sale. Now, one thing I want to talk about is I have talked in other posts about um, making your house sturdy. And that you can, one of the ways you can make it sturdy is by straightening it out and making sure all your tabs are hooked up. And once your tabs are hooked up, you can take a hammer and pound on those and that makes your house hold together nice and tight. However, here's the caution that I had not thought about or realized. There may come a day where you want to take your dollhouse apart. And if you think that is going to happen, don't pound those tabs down real tight. Those tabs can only be bent up and down so many times and then they will break off. And that's why sometimes you find houses without tabs. Um, of course, we know how to deal with that. We can deal with that. But I would minimize bending those. Now this house, I do intend to take it apart. One thing I've got, one of our dear group members named Mary needs a copy of this wall here. Her house is mi missing this wall. So my intention is to take that out and get a good picture of it for her. It's too hard to get, it's too hard to get your camera in there to get good pictures. So I'm going to take that wall apart and take a picture up here, then a picture a picture down here and then on the outside we'll have to do two pictures here because uh, one won't I won't be able to print one that big but I'll do a picture of this and a picture of this now her house as I recall is a different color so I may try to find one on the internet that's her color I think hers is red here and white here the outside of this house these houses di were produced with different colors on the outside but they are consistently the same on the inside with the same color pattern Okay, and I have reminded you about why you might not want to pound those tabs down tight because you may want to take it apart someday. <clears throat> My long-term plan for this house, because I have got I have got one just like it, only it's got the rumpus room over on this. 
I've got one just like it, but with a rumpus room on this end. And because of that, I think I'm going to sell this house. So you can watch the progress, and then maybe someday, if you're interested in it, um, I'll put it up for sale. Okay, I have given it a wipe down all the way around. I need to turn it around and wipe down the roof on the other side. I know it's dusty on the back. This I always call this the back of the house. And in my doll room, this side doesn't get to show. So it has not been dusted. The front of the house has been cleaned occasionally, but this side has not been cleaned or even dusted. So um, I'm going to go over that really good with my alcohol, possibly that number nine cleaner also, and see if I can get that really nice. Now, I do want to show you something here. Um, Linda had pointed this out to me. The graphics on these are so incredible. Look here how this light is. And then you can see the shadow on the lithograph of that light. That's how detailed those are. Here's the railing and then the shadow of the railing. So there are lots and lots of detail on these lithographs. That's one thing I love about these houses. All right, I'm going to give it a good cleaning and then I will check back with you. Okay, I think I've got this set up so you can watch me as I work to get this um, bend out of this part of the roof. I don't know if you can tell that, that there is quite a little bend there in that roof. So here's how to do it. First I take a piece of, this is a piece of leftover hardwood flooring, and it's nice to have one, in this case, that's about as long as the roof, so I can hold it up there against the roof, and there you can see how far off that roof is, that there's quite a little bow there. Then I'm gonna hold that up there tight, and I'm gonna take my rubber hammer, and you can use a rubber hammer like this, or you can use a regular hammer and put a sock over the end. And when you hammer on this, I'm not sure I've ever been always clear on this, but you want to hammer right here on the edge, not up here on that flat part because you will get dings in it if you hammer there. You want to hammer right here on this rolled edge and you could start very soft and then hammer harder, harder, harder until you get that bent into shape. But when I hammer, I'm going to have my wood up here and that will help that metal to know where it's supposed to go. I'm going to do just a little few hammers now, and then I'll do it off camera because it gets really loud. Hammer right there on that edge. And that wood helps that metal know where to go in order to be straight. Okay, I hope you're able to try this technique on your house because you'll be, you'll be surprised at really how easy it is. It did not take very many hammers at all in order to get that. You can see how much straighter that is. That roof is just nice and straight now, right along that wood as it should be. It, did, it took, oh, maybe just six or eight or ten nice pounds with my hammer to get that done. So I am very happy with that. So next we're going to do just a little bit of prepping and then we'll start to paint. I'm going to tell you how I'm going to prep this um, and then we'll come back and paint it another night. I've got a few things I've got to work on tonight. But here's um, here's how what you need to do, number one. You need to sand this down and I sometimes say you need to make that smooth. This feels quite rough where that rust is and even maybe an inch or so this way. It's really rough. And if you were to just paint over that without any sanding, your new paint is just going to be rough also so although this doesn't have to be smooth 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 it has to be at least flat so that when you run your finger over there you're not feeling those raised rough areas i take just a little piece of sandpaper this i cut off of a bigger piece this i think is the 180 grit you can use 180 or finer and a bigger number on sandpaper is finer so if you had 220 grit it would be finer, it would be less rough. This is 180 if I recall right. And I've just cut a little piece off to make it easy to handle. And I'm just gonna sand along there now. So this will take the paint off as you go. So you wanna confine it to just those areas that are raised up. Because the more paint you take off, the more you're gonna replace. Now if you want to paint the whole floor, then you know what, sand all you want, I don't care. But if I'm just gonna touch up these little spots, I'm just gonna make those flat or smoothish so that when it's painted the texture won't be different than the rest of the floor and you can see it's making some you can see down here there's getting some rust powder down there that's coming off of it 
and that is taking that raised part off of there. It's also removing a little bit of that paint along there, but that's okay because it was rough and it was rusty, so I'm okay with that. Now I took my grandma out of here. She was quite concerned when I started to pound, but I'm gonna put her back in there because she likes to keep an eye on what we're doing. This was her house. She has lived here for a while. I took some pictures of her sitting here in the kitchen that I posted on our some of our welcome posts. I'll have to post some of her again. She uh, was, I've actually had her quite a long time. I don't recall where I got her. But she was, you know, as a doll collector, a lot of times I would buy small dolls and small items and small, you know, little things. Of course, I've always had a, a love for doll houses. So, okay, we're going to move back to that back corner. I feel like this is getting pretty smooth. I'm going to go back to that back corner. And there's a lot more rust back there. My big hand gets in the way, and my grandma's getting in the way. She's going to come up to the bedroom and wait for us up there. Don't worry about it, Grandma. We got it under control. She looks a lot like one of my grandmas. Now, again, I'm trying to confine my sanding to those rusty areas. There's a cute little graphic out here. Um, you can see that it's just part of a, it's a little pattern. It's just like this one up here. So I'm going to try not to sand that cute little graphic off. I just want to get that rust down smooth. Down, not real smooth, but flat. After I do this, I will wipe it down again with rubbing alcohol. And the reason I do is because of that rust powder that comes off. So here I'm squirting my towel with alcohol again. And those spots that have been sanded, once I get them smooth, I will wipe them off. After that, we are ready for paint. So I'm going to leave this video at this point. And I'm going to do the sanding off a of camera. I think you got the idea of what I'm doing. A little bit of sandpaper. Get your hand work back in there. Get that, as, get that so it's smooth, smoothish, flat. And then wipe it down with rubbing the alcohol. And I'm going to do all these spots. This one, probably here along the edge. A little spot here. And then down here. All right. Next time I see you, we'll be getting our paintbrush out. You guys have a good day. And thanks so much for joining me.